This is Indie ASMR, and uh, I'm very happy to be bringing you a special video. Um, some of you might have noticed I haven't been making videos recently, and um, unfortunately I will not really be producing any content in the future. It's just been difficult to prioritize this channel and make videos regularly for myself, so um, this is going to be kind of a one-off um, kind of special video. So. Um, I just want to first off say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to me. I, my subscribers are still growing, um, so very appreciative of all of you. And um, this video is going to be dedicated to Christopher Ace Renzi, who um, he commented on, I think, part two of the Star Wars adventure videos that I had made a while ago. And he just told me how much he enjoyed them, so... I figured I had to finish this adventure for both him and also other fans of the other two videos. So, um, before we get into it, I do want to say that uh, this adventure will be a little bit more intense than the others. This is going to be part three and the final part of the series, so um, it may not be relaxing in some moments for you. I will do my best to stay, uh, you know, whispering and, and calm, but there may just be some content that is not very relaxing. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, there will be a lot of fighting and some warfare. There may also be some fairly graphic violence, so there won't be anything too crazy, but if you're not comfortable with that, you may want to just skip this. Um, but for everyone else who is going to watch, thank you all so much, and uh, I hope you enjoy. So, here is the Star Wars Adventure Part 3, The Cybernetic Threat. Part 1, Dr. Silo's Research Camp. Dark clouds hover above you as you tread through the strange Volusian jungle with a crew of six rebels. Walking beside you is Moss Daxon, Oka Mindo, Jasper Neal, and Lieutenant Kaluan and Matt of the Rebel Commando Unit named the Shrikes. Lieutenant and Matt has been ordered by General Griggs Maydean to lead the mission to the research labs to slice the Imperial system and gain access to all data regarding the new cybernetic technologies. It has been made clear that this is a secondary mission to the destruction of the camps. General Maydean will not risk this attack at the cost of letting the project's mastermind, Dr. Silo, escape with his team of researchers. In the debrief that you attended before leaving for Fallujah, it was stated that the campus would be two miles away from a larger Imperial base with ground troops upwards of 5,000. This also includes a small squadron of Dai LN and Dai Aggressor Starfighters in the nearby hangar. Lieutenant Imad stressed the importance of stealth in this mission, and also noted that there is a chance that you would not make it out alive. General Maintine is giving you time to steal the cybernetic data, but will not hesitate to make the order for the rebel attack on the camps and the Imperial base. As you trample lightly through the jungle, you are bewildered by the sights that surround you. Large neon mushrooms, fungi, lichen, and plants surround you with overstimulation like a carnival ride. Before you is a long spiraled plant with purple and white stripes and a yellow mushroom cap. It reeks of sulfur as you get close to it, but that is not the only smell that you recognize. Suddenly, a sweet scent of cinnamon hits your nose, and you look down to, to see thousands of blue spouted flowers with long tubes projected out from their stems and slowly pumping out a brown gas that takes you off guard. Quickly, Oka pulls you back towards the group. What the hell are you doing? Stay away from those, Oka says. What do you mean? I was just walking along and... Wait, how did I get so far away from the group? You reply to her. You were pulled by those Senna blossoms over there. Don't you know those are extremely dangerous? A few more seconds, and you would have passed out and left those carnivorous plants a nice snack. Stay with me. You wobble a little bit as you get your bearings, but then a thought hits you. Hey, why don't we pick some of those up and take them with us? You ask Oka. Are you crazy? Why would we do that? She replies. It might help us create a distraction. 
You point this out as you see a light turn on in Oka's mind. <laughs> I like it, but be very careful. Here, put on this respirator. Oka reaches into her satchel and pulls out two masks with coiled tubes coming out from the mouthpieces. You grab one and attach it to your face. Oka walks with you to the plants and takes a sharp combat knife, which she uses to quickly cut off the flowers of the cinnamon blossoms. You gather a few with her and put them into your bag. Good thinking, kid, she says to you. Shortly after, Lieutenant Kaiwan Emat puts his hand up and waves for you to return to the group. You jog briskly towards him, but he immediately hushes you. Shh, quiet, this is it, he says. You peek through the dense, multicolored undergrowth and kneel down to remain hidden. Before you is a collection of brown circular tents with simple brown flaps as doors. They look like they had been pitched in a hurry and haven't been here for a very long time. As you squint your eyes, you glance into an opening and see some lab equipment lying on a metal countertop. Kaluan then speaks. There, the big one in the middle. I'm guessing that's where the Imperial database is located. Stick with me. You make your way around the camps, moving clockwise to your left and circling behind the main tent. Kaluan motions for Moss and Ochre to come with them and for you and Jasper to keep lookout. You interject and speak quietly to the lieutenant. Uh, if, if you don't mind, sir, uh, Ochre and I have a plan to distract the Imperials. You pull out the cinnamon blossoms that you had collected and you show them to him. He sharpens his gaze out towards the camps and responds with a whisper. Okay, this this is good. Moss, Jasper, you stay behind. Oka and the kid, come with me. You wait briefly for some stormtroopers to pass by fifty yards to your left before scurrying behind a pile of crates next to a smaller tent for cover. You reattach your respirator and grab one of the cinnamon blossoms, which you shove underneath the bottom of the tent. You squeeze it hard and hear a puff of gas exit from the top of the flower. After waiting for a minute, you hear two distinct thuds on the floor. You look to Lieutenant Amat and Oka and give a smirk before nodding your head and scurrying to the next tent. As you release the gas into the tents, you keep an eye out for any patrols nearby. Finally, you make it to the last tent and release the last three cinnamon blossoms. This time you hear several thuds. And as you look inside the tent, you see that no one is left standing. You motion for Oka and Lieutenant Amat to enter. As you turn around, you see long metal shelves surrounding the walls of the tent. There are bits and pieces of cybernetic parts on them, with various wirings and circuit boards scattered around the countertops below. This is certainly the main research lab, and the farthest wall of the tent is a computer mainframe. Oka walks briskly over and takes out her slicer gear. She holds the metal pad in her hand as she pulls out the black board connected by some multicolored wires and slides it into a slot in the mainframe. A lock-in window appears on the screen in front of her with a spinning imperial symbol on it. Oka begins typing on her slicer pad. You and the lieutenant stand there with your hands on the blasters and your utility belts. You look around nervously. Make this quick, corporal, as quick as you can. Lieutenant Nimat says. Oka doesn't respond and keeps typing. After a minute or so, she passes through the login screen and a simple database appears. Oka continues typing as a progress bar appears and begins loading. As she does this, you slowly walk over to the flap at the front of the tent. You take another step and then suddenly a face appears outside. You act quickly and reach out and grab what looks to be a man in a lab coat with two cybernetic eyes. He is holding a drink which he drops as you pull him inside. Lieutenant Emad readies his blaster and Oka begins panicking as she looks behind her. Keep going Oka, we've got this, the lieutenant says as you throw the man to the ground. Please, uh, don't, don't hurt me, he whines. You quiet down, Emad responds firmly. Don't you say another word unless I ask you to speak. The man nods his head as he breathes heavily and looks nervously around at his surroundings. As you stand over him, you see that he has a name badge attached to his lab coat pocket. It reads, Dr. Henley Silo. Look, Lieutenant, 
is Dr. Silo, you affirm. Well, looks like you came in at the perfect time, Doctor. Get those binders on him, Lieutenant Emmett says. You take the binders you had hanging from your utility belt and lock them onto his hands behind his back. You bring him to his feet as he pleads to the Lieutenant. Please, I, I hold no allegiance to the Empire. I have a family. Then consider us your rescuers, Doc, Emmett responds. As you take a deep breath, you begin to hear the distinct sound of a starfighter laser cannon in the distance. Lieutenant Emmett receives a message on his hollow messenger and opens it up to watch. A small hologram of General Mateen appears. Lieutenant Emmett, you need to evacuate the, rescue, the research camps immediately. The Empire has spotted our outpost and are beginning their attack. If you have not collected the cybernetic data, then I'm afraid the mission is lost. Take your team and run at once. I will be making the order to destroy the camps in five minutes. Lieutenant Emmett closes the hollow messenger and looks up with a distressed expression. Oka, time to wrap it up, he says loudly. I need more time, she yells in response. We ain't got time. Let's go. Part 2. The Battle of Felucia You grab the arms of Dr. Silo and shove him out the door as Lieutenant Emmett follows with his blaster cocked. Oka, let's go. He yells one more time. Oka continues to wait for the progress bar to load on the screen. It inches forward. 96%, 97, 98, 99. It pauses for a moment. 100%, Oka yells with enthusiasm. She quickly detaches her slicer gear and puts it in her satchel before running out the door with you. The four of you make it to Jasper and Moss, who are still waiting in the bushes behind the camps. All right, team, let's get the hell out of here. Let's run. The lieutenant commands. Wait, Jasper says. What about those speeder bikes? Jasper points to a group of 74C Aerotech speeders at the edge of the camp in the distance. Okay, grab the bikes, but hurry. We only have three minutes left until this whole place goes up. And Matt replies. You run with the group to the speeder bikes pushing Dr. Silo as you go. There are three bikes, just enough for two riders each. Jasper and Moss hop onto the first one, while Amat and Oka get onto the second. They each fire their engines quickly and race off out of the camp. You stumble over with the doctor and attempt to start the engine of the third speeder, but it doesn't turn on. In the skies, you see three Rebel X-Wing fighters flying straight towards you. Come on, let's go! You scream with exasperation. Finally, the engine turns on and you hit the speed pedal and start racing out of the area. Over your head, the X-Wings roar past you and fire their laser cannons which blast the encampment and ignite the tents in a fiery blaze behind you. The doctor looks back and gasps. You keep your gaze forward and zigzag in and out of the jungle. As you race towards the two other speeders, you see a clearing before you. However, this clearing is not empty. A large force of Imperial stormtroopers is marching straight towards the rebel camps. Out of the corner of your eye, you see a small group of rebel soldiers waiting in cover to ambush the imps from the east. You straddle up beside the Lieutenant Amad Speeder. He yells you in order. You'll keep going straight ahead through the Northwest Trail up here and meet with Major Twindell. They'll need all the help that they can get. Emmett then points to a small A-wing fighter about to touch down in the tree line to the northeast. Look over there. That's Greg's coon, the Kaldor. Go meet with him and help the guerrilla force to the east. That flank may be the best chance that we have right now. You nod your head and veer off on an easterly path towards the landing A-wing. The other speeders continue onwards to the rebel camps. As you approach the ship, Greg sleeps out and greets you. I'm glad you're okay. We don't have much time. We only have two available X-Wing squadrons. The ties alone could overpower them, never mind these ground forces. Grex reaches for his utility belt and pulls out the hilt of his lightsaber. He ignites it and out comes a glowing yellow beam that illuminates the area around him. You reply to him, 
Over there, about 300 yards to our south, is a small group of rebels waiting to ambush the Imperials from behind. We should join them. That sounds like a great plan. Let's go. Greg starts away quickly into the jungle as you follow behind. As you get closer to the unit, you come within 20 feet of a group of stormtroopers who march past you. One of them surveys the area, but you duck down quickly before he can spot you. They continue onwards. As you approach the rebels, a lieutenant pulls up a blaster and speaks softly but firmly. Halt! Stop right there, he says. Don't shoot, we are the rebellion. My name is Greg Coon, and I am here to help lead the ambush, Grex replies. The lieutenant nods his head in approval and motions his hand for you to get close to the ground. You sit and wait in silence for it feels like an eternity. Every second that passes, you try to calm your heart rate, but it continues to get faster and faster. After several minutes, the lieutenant motions for the unit to rush. Grex runs out as if you were a flash of light and begins hacking down stormtroopers with his lightsaber. You pull out your blaster rifle and begin firing rapidly at the backs of the Imperials. At first you don't aim, but eventually you catch your breath and focus your attention on where your blaster bolts are going. You knock down one, two, three troopers in a row. The other rebels are firing off their blasters in succession. There is a wave of blue and green blaster bolts flying through the air with a loud barrage of sound. To the north of the troopers, you see the second rebel force coming out to fight the troopers head on. There are rebel officers behind them shouting orders, as well as X-Wings and Ties having dogfights in the air. You've never experienced anything like this before. You are hit with a wave of emotion and almost a sense of assuredness. It is as if you don't need to think about your actions, but simply act. You continue firing and feel a rise in confidence as you take out more and more troopers. However, after just a few minutes, a sense of dread hits you. Off in the distance, you see something descending from the skies. As it becomes clearer, you can see that it is a Lambda shuttle. Part 3. The End Grex pauses a moment and looks to the Lambda shuttle as it lands. A burst of steam comes from the bottom of the ship as the ramp lowers and a tall, foreboding figure emerges. The figure has a black suit and cape with a dark black, shiny helmet. It doesn't take you long to recognize this to be Darth Vader. His presence can be felt deep within you, and your head begins to pound as you lose focus on your blaster fire. Grex begins running through the army of stormtroopers, slicing those he can on his way towards Vader. You call out his name and beg him to stop. Grex, no! He is too far away to hear, and is about to meet the villain face to face. Vader puts his hand towards his waist and pulls out his lightsaber. A red beam extends from the hilt and meets with Grex's yellow lightsaber in a defensive parry. The Keldor slides in aggressively and kicks up some dirt as he tries to circle to Vader's weak side. Another crack of the sabers can be heard as Vader thrusts forward towards Grex, who bats the attack away. The two continue sparring with each other in the distance. As you readjust your eyes, you lock back onto the troopers around you and start firing again. The ambush appears to be making some ground and helping to scatter the forces. On the northern front of the fight, the first unit is holding their ground well. You cannot be sure, but it appears that the Imperial force is much smaller now than it was when the battle began. In the skies, the small squadron of X-Wings seem to be distracting the TIE fighters well with their evasive maneuvers. Even with Vader's arrival, you feel a boost in morale, and you continue fighting. You pierce a, a trooper through his chest plate with your blaster, and another one falls to the right of you. Your training as a computer specialist did not prepare you for a moment like this, but still you rise to the occasion and fight hard for the rebellion. The ambush unit pushes forward and hits the imps from the eastern side. As you run, you get close to the first unit and see Jasper in his pilot uniform, firing from the cover of a giant white and black striped mushroom. You run to him. Hey, you're okay, Jasper says to you in the crossfire. I'm glad you are too, Jasper, you respond. Jasper extends outwards with his blaster pistol and fires.
fires a single shot before shuffling back into cover. Well, we can't stay here. Let's get back to the lieutenant, you say. Jasper nods and follows your lead as you weave in between some bright blue cat mushrooms and slimy green pods. As you make it through the rebel unit, you can see Grex and Vader continuing to battle each other in the field near the Lambda shuttle. Flashes of yellow and red slice through the air as Grex jumps onto the ship and then swoops back down from above. As he lands, Vader clips him in the shoulder with his saber. Grex! You scream as you run in their direction. Grex falls onto the flat of his back on the ground and puts his hand on the wound. Vader lifts his arm out and pinches his finger and thumb together, causing Grex to choke and writhe in pain. He is then lifted from the ground and hovers before Vader. As you get to him, you yell out, Stop! Put him down! Silence, rebel scum! He replies with a deep, muffled voice. Ah, a Keldor Jedi. You have made it far without us knowing about you, Vader says as he looks back at Grex. Do what you will, Vader. I do not fear the dark side and I do not fear you, Grex says. No, I must say that your words appear to match your emotions. I can feel the bravery within you. It is unfortunate for you that this makes no difference in your fate. Vader takes his lightsaber and brings Grex close to him. All of that time hidden in the shadows, and you reveal yourself only to be destroyed. What a pity. In an instant, you see the red beam of light pass through Grex's neck like a stick of butter. Vader releases him, and his body falls to the ground along with his head, which rolls towards you. You scream in agony. No! The Sith Lord points the tip of his lightsaber towards you and begins walking over slowly. How does it feel to know that you cannot escape? He says to you. I may not escape, Vader, but at least I'll die with a purpose. You respond angrily. Suddenly, to your left, you hear a familiar voice. Hey, Vader! You see Moss standing 20 yards away with a mobile sentry heavy repeating blaster in his hands. He begins firing endless rounds towards Vader, who spins his lightsaber, deflecting every bolt that comes in his direction. He faces Moss and begins walking forward. This is your chance to get away, and you take it. Good luck, kid. Moss yells as he begins firing faster and faster, until one of the bolts ricochets back towards him and hits him in the chest. You hear him scream, but can't turn around and keep running to the rebel camps. As you arrive, you meet with Lieutenant and Matt and the remaining crew members. Jasper and Oka are both safe along with many other rebel soldiers, and Matt addresses you. All right, our jobs are done here. It's time to load up and get home, he says. But what about the battle, you respond. This is not our place anymore. We've done all that we can do here. We have the cybernetic data. We did a great job. Mission accomplished. Now it's time to pack up, Sergeant. He says this as he smacks the badge of a predatory bird, the symbol of the shrikes, onto your chest. Sergeant, you ask. And Matt just smirks at you and walks away. Despite your appreciation of the commendation, a somber wave of emotion rushes over you as you begin backing up your supplies onto a CR-90 Rebel Corvette starship. You step onto the ramp and wait for Oka and Jasper to follow. As the ship takes off, you sit down at a degeric hollow chess table and close your eyes for a moment. As they reopen, you see Oka and Jasper standing before you. Want to play a game, Sergeant? Oka asks you as she puts her hand on your shoulder. Just one, you reply as you smile and flip on the switch. The Corvette flies out of the atmosphere as you hear the hyperspace engine turn on. It's time to go home. And that's going to wrap up part three of the Star Wars adventure. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, again, um, this is going to be just a one-off video for me, but I do want to thank uh, all my subs and viewers. Thank you all so much for your support. And uh, thanks again to Christopher Ace Renzi for requesting this. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, three-part series. If you haven't seen parts one and two, they are on my channel right now, so you can check them out. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much, and uh, I hope you have a good one.